run this back really quick. Uh, on my put a ring on it video, I asked you if you believed in unconditional love. For me, I was speaking of unconditional love as if it was synonymous with unconditional relationships, right? So there is a thing called unconditional love. I can love you forever, but not want to be with you. Thank you, Brie girl. Um, however, when it comes to a relationship is what, what I was speaking of in particular is that there are conditions. There are things that are going to make you walk away from a relationship. So there is unconditional love and unconditional relationships. I don't believe in an unconditional relationship. All relationships have conditions. Okay. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray lifestyle coach we are reviewing married at first sight season number 13 see i got it episode number four one down and a lifetime to go listen i'm sure there are many of couples that were married at first sight that, that thought that they were going to be together forever and we knew differently specifically i'm talking about eric and virginia or even oh ryan and clara couldn't think of her name but we know that relationships come with conditions that just fit in perfectly with what i was talking about with put a ring on it episode seven if you don't know what i'm talking about go check out my review so here we are all the couples are married if you are new to my channel i didn't tell you this last time but i go couple by couple not scene by scene because it works better for my spirit to be able to just talk about them all at one time instead of bouncing around the way my mind is set up i can't be bouncing around like that anyway so we see Belle and Johnny where we left them in the honeymoon suite. Um, and we, we find out that it's Johnny's sister who decorates their room with the Vietnamese traditional comforter set that has a hundred kids on it. Cause you know, may your marriage be blessed with a hundred kids and a thousand grandkids is a saying that they have. Now what we find is I already can see that maybe Bao might be right now slightly a little more into Johnny or has been slightly a little more into Johnny than he with her. Specifically when she said, remember when they got married, she was like, I've always had a crush on Johnny. I got a crush on you. I found out. Hey, anyway, so um, what we find out is that they already have each other's numbers. And Johnny's all like, huh, what we do? Bow's like, yeah, let me get my phone. Let me show you. Because you remember that time we went out, that last time we saw each other? We went out. Remember that? He don't, he don't remember. She's all like, I even still got our chat history. Looks at his phone, honey, and there is nothing there. She also said they had a little conversation about the museum. And I'll go with you. And she said, I'd really like that. And then he disappeared, became a ghost, uh, no longer replied. He said he had a lot of first dates a little later. You saw that, right? I just did this to my hair, y'all. So excuse me if I feel like I need to adjust it. Now it's time for us to meet the family, la familia. I don't know how to say it in Vietnamese, but Johnny meets Bao's family first. Um, and listen, her roommate was like, listen, the gift that you gave her, she was not a fan of it. Uh, she was concerned about it. You remember, she, she wants a brilliant mind not a sports buff you know not somebody that's gonna be in the bars and hollering at the tv all the time her words not mine i mean summed up a little bit but she wants a brilliant mind a nobel peace uh prize mind as if you can't be well-rounded because it seems like johnny may be uh he asked you know what does she have this kind of reaction fervent reaction about this kind of stuff all the time the sister and the best friend said yes the roommate yes this this is normal and so what we recommend for you is that you have a lot of patience you be a good listener and the brother said that he recommends that you have the ability to adapt i mean he said he did been on a lot of first dates hell he might be a brett too uh a lot of first dates because when things don't work out and he don't like certain things he decides i'm a, i think i better let it go so he's like you're gonna need to be able to adapt aka learn to compromise but looks like so will bow as well bow goes and meets with 
Johnny's family. And immediately, Johnny's mom is like, you can call me auntie or mom. Whatever is comfortable to you. And that was kind of heartwarming. Listen, I never called my mother-in-law mom. My husband called my mom mom, but I never called her. She was always Mrs. XYZ, period. We didn't have that relationship. I kind of knew she really wasn't fond of me from the beginning. God rest her soul. We did patch up a little bit and had a, a better understanding of where one another was coming from um, after my husband had passed. Nevertheless, she still was always Mrs. XYZ. They let her know, you know what, Johnny is direct. And she was relieved because she's like, I'm direct too. And I asked the experts for someone who was direct. Um, and his mom starts like crying a little bit when they talk about Johnny's dad. Was that? Yeah. When they talked about Johnny's dad and how he wasn't there and how kind of, you know, this is something that, you know, he's always wanted. She's always wanted, you know, it became very emotional. Uh, when her, when his auntie said, oh, cause they talked about kids. All right, maybe I'll get another grandson. When the auntie said, and Johnny might have quit his job and be Mr. Mom. Uh, the three ladies laughed. Val did not see that funny at all. Like, uh, that will not be happening, sir, ma'am. No, thank you. So when they get together and they debrief about what is happening or what happened with the family, she asked, you know, there was something that I wanted to ask about and it's your dad. Like, where is he? And so, you know, Johnny explains that the dad had been gone and had never really had, you know, had been gone and isn't really on board with this. Um, and she says, well, I promise you I'll win him over with, I'll dress pretty. Cause that dress she had on, I thought she looked very nice. I'll dress pretty. Um, I'll speak in Vietnamese. I have a way with dad. Right. And you know, she seems very traditional Vietnamese. So I think that that would probably help his cause. But the one thing that would help him for sure is him seeking therapy to have conversations about how he feels with his dad, about his dad, about his dad not being there to support him. You can see that he is very much so distraught every time they bring it up. Okay. They gave us a cut back to the last time when dad said he wasn't showing up and he was, you know, when he was in full tears, y'all remember that? I remember that. And so I feel like the one thing I know for sure is not everybody is going to agree with the decisions that you make for your life. And you want to find out sooner or later who you're living for. Are you living for their approval? Yes, we want their support. Yes, we want them to be there. Yes, that's what we want. But if they aren't there, then what? He went along with the wedding. He went forward with it, knowing it was something that he wanted to do. So now that you understand that you have to live for yourself, Johnny, baby, go get some therapy to work through the issues that you have with your father not being there. I know that it's cultural though, right? I know that the approval is cultural, but nevertheless, my hands are still red from dyeing my hair or cellophane it. Um, nevertheless, live for yourself. Know that if he's not gonna accept you, how are you gonna move forward? Start by getting some therapy. Um, listen, I'm, I'm a big advocate of therapy and, and talking things out with someone who does not know you and that could probably give you uh, tools to use and show you or help you discover how to navigate situations that are uncomfortable for you. Cause you know, and the joys. Okay. Cause you go to your therapist, honey, cause you happy tip, find you a therapist, build a relationship pre having an issue. If you're in a good space, like I am now all peaceful and joyful and just exhibiting love to myself, I see a therapist because I already want something established and be able to work through things, you know, beforehand. People stop going to therapy because they'd be like, oh, I feel better till the next thing come. Anyway, so we find out where they're going to the honeymoon because we are still in a panorama, panorama. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't the song I'm thinking. Yes, gas pedal, and then like yeah, it's fall off. That song, but that ain't, that ain't the right word. I can't. It is panorama, I think. Uh, anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, they go to the Florida Keys and stay in a place called, I didn't forgot, Isla Bella, Isabella, Isla Bessa. Uh, listen, they go to the Florida Keys. I didn't write it down or I did this in somebody else's notes. 
when I get there, I get there. One of the things that stood out the most was when she said, when she asked him, why are you in this bed? Like really, you gonna sleep here when there's two beds, you can sleep in the other room? I wrote down that this is indicative that he may be in for a ride when it comes to intimacy physical intimacy you can see that he's very much so physical touch like she said you saw he holds her hand when he was out on the balcony and they were talking about uh debriefing you see right now as they're laying in the bed he's rubbing on her shoulder like he's got to touch her and have some kind of connection with her she doesn't seem as much bothered by it and I, I i'm just keeping my eye open like she does say some things that make me feel like she's going to loosen up quite a bit when he comes back he shares with her listen i really want you to be comfortable and if we're moving too fast let me know um and i'll slow it way down way down that might have been too much he did say i want to get to know you build a friendship be best friends and then move to the next step which was good for her because she is not physical touch she is not physical touch she told us it was acts of service gifts and acts of service she told us hands down hope he heard that um then he asked her a question about you know her sexual proclivities like what is it that you like and she said kissing and the kisses that we have now has shown me exactly the type of lover that you have is showing me the type of lover that you will be bow girl tell the truth kissing is so big for me i don't know how people don't like to kiss i enjoy kissing especially with a good kisser and she's absolutely right when a kiss is slow and passionate, uh, you know that that's the kind of lover they are. But when it's aggressive and intense, you also know what kind of lover they're going to be. You know what to expect. And I'm the kind of person that wants to show you how I kiss. Like, I don't necessarily have a style of kissing, but it is very sensual. It's very passionate, right? Um, but I've kissed people who are very aggressive. It's too much, too much, too hard, too much spit which would mean i wouldn't probably enjoy the uh connection intimately physically with them he shares that his sex is pretty plain vanilla okay i don't want to do no i ain't in no bdsm i'm not kinky he don't even want no anal like just plain vagina and penis in vagina type sex that's all he wants you you doing oral at least But she seems okay with plain vanilla sex. Y'all okay with plain vanilla sex? Sometimes plain vanilla sex is great. Other times you do want to uh, climb the wall. Earth shattering. I can't breathe. <sighs> sex. Like, I'm just saying. Y'all let me know down below in the comments. You like plain, plain vanilla? Very simple. Very missionary is what it sounded like to me that they were going to have. But we know that Asian people... Um, have been classified as freaks. I don't want to continue that stereotype, but that's what they say, that the that Asian women are very adventurous in the bedroom. If you've ever been with one, let me know. Down below in the comments. Okay, so let's talk Rachel and Jose. What I said was, um, you hear women say that we are worried about what we're going to look like without our makeup. I look like this. I look just like this. So, okay, my circles are a little darker. And my lips are almost this color. Like, y'all didn't see me plain Jane. And, you know, I woke up like this. But that is a major concern. Is he going to like me in my natural, beautiful state? Of course he will. Of course he will. Why wouldn't he? And men seem to be worried about intimacy. What's going to happen? Uh, is they going to want to? <laughs> anyway, they doing lots of kissing, okay? In the nighttime, sensual kissing. Wake up in the morning and they kissing. And he said that they didn't brush their teeth. They was kissing so much, they didn't brush their teeth the next morning. How y'all feel about that? They just met, though. Well, keep that in mind. They just met a couple days. But even still, been together for years. How do you feel about being together for months, whatever? Right now in your relationship, when you kiss in the morning, are you getting up and brushing your teeth? I just want to know. What is it that you do when you wake up in the morning next to your boo, your bae, your spouse, your love interest, your partner? What do you do? Do you just go straight for the kiss? And you be like, wait a minute, let me go.
brush my teeth because that could ruin the moment that could be happening. Y'all know morning sex is amazing. You don't want to miss out on that child. Wake up a little earlier. <laughs> She says that she thinks he's perfect for her because she doesn't want to have to do a lot of com compromising. Uh, lady, y'all just met. Honey, and compromising comes with the territory of relationships, especially when you're living together, okay? Especially when you're married and you want this to be a till death do us part type thing. You we meet the family. Jose goes and meets Rachel's family, and he rambles on and on about how great she is. And I'm all like, he talks a lot does he take a breath is he trying to sell himself like slow down his family shares with him that she is messy messy that her priority is not cleaning up but it was going to school and she's thinking about going back to get her doctorate so she is messy messy and he cringes by it because remember he is highly organized He's got some Virgo in his chart for sure. Highly organized, very much so neat and clean and pristine. Uh, she is not, she is not. And you can tell that he's that way in the way he keeps himself manicured. That line on his beard is absolutely perfect. His eyebrows, he probably brush them like we do. Uses a good old spoolie and gets them together, child. They also say to him that she does not express herself like when she's upset that they have to ask her what's wrong was wrong but she says things like i'm keeping a mental note the mom shares you know what well, when you want to ask your question just you know just be careful be gentle is what she says because she might explode for me this sounds like i gotta walk on eggshells i don't want to walk on eggshells in no relationship i want to be able to say what it is this is how i feel and it be done right and when the parents or when they start talking about how she does mental notes and all these things i literally wrote down oh wait and that she's easily annoyed i wrote down that she does not know how to express her feelings she shies away from it because Probably she doesn't want someone not to like her. She wants to be a people pleaser. She wants to be accepted. So she doesn't necessarily know how to articulate herself in a manner um, that she feels is acceptable. That's what I got. Rachel sits with his family, honey, and the dad straight off the top says, listen, he is the time police. Be on time. Be on time or he probably going to get frustrated. He is the time police. But they also share that he is... Um, very much so good with money financially sound to the point that you know it might be a little over the top that he is the board with his finances on it that we saw in um you know when we were being introduced to them what's that called the was it the casting episode right so um the fact of the matter is she and he's got a great credit score you know and the fact of the matter is she's like i need help in this area this is an area that um I'm successful at and I'm hoping that he could help me and I'm wondering how this is gonna fare out also though she said and the mother said and she said to him what is going to be our first argument what are we gonna girl don't worry about that because it's gonna come and when it comes just be prepared to be open and honest about how you feel so then they get together and they're debriefing and he talks about how the parents said or the sister and the mom said you know she does take mental notes that's how you know when something is bothering her and what she shared with shared with us or was it with him too is the fact that she now learned how to communicate and express herself i hope that to be true we will see if that's true or not i really hope so because the one thing that we need to know how to do is to advocate for ourselves our feelings, our thoughts, our ideas, we need to be able to articulate them. Even if you have to stay, take a step back to figure out what you're feeling or to really understand what the emotion is, you have to be your biggest advocate. You can tell somebody, I want to put a pin in this and come back to it because I need to process it. Like, be your biggest advocate. As a child, it was your parent. As an adult, it is you. Then he reassures her about, you know, who he was and why he is the way he is with his finances because he wanted to be prepared for his wife, his esposa that was coming along. So, I mean, that's a good thing. And then he tells her, we'll work through it. I got us. We, we will work through uh, our finances. He reassures her, which is great. Nobody wants to be like, oh, you bad with your, you, you bad with your finances? I can't deal with it. Like, maybe you could help her. We all could use 
um, a little help. So they're packing to get ready to go, you know, getting they, all their stuff together. She got all her stuff compartmentalized or whatever. And he dumps a bowl of condoms in the in the bag. And she's like, oh, no, uh -uh, what you doing? And I was looking at her like, oh, no, what you doing? Because when she said you can't have no babies with condoms, girl, it's too soon. Put that condom on. You don't know nothing about him. I think everybody is tested. I think that's what y'all told me before, that everybody is tested uh, before um being being matched but nevertheless we know that there are some antibodies that take three to six months to show up we know you know what i'm saying like we know some things and so with that being said wear the condom wear the condom at least until the eight weeks is up wear the condom like don't be foolish you don't want to be pregnant get pregnant during this honeymoon phase and then in two months, you don't like him. You don't want to be with him. You want to get a divorce. Like, think smart. I'm hoping she was just joking. Was she just joking, y'all? Child. They get to the Florida Keys, enter into the room, and she jokes about, you know, if we get into a fight, you're going to sleep in the other room. And I'm all like, no, that's not a good plan. Joking or not, there's always some truth in jest. I mean, if y'all agree with that, let me know, because I feel like some things are said, we hide them in jokes, so they they land softer, but I don't feel like you should sleep in different rooms, um, unless it's a really heated argument, like it's really, really, really bad. You know what I mean? Like really, really bad. But there shouldn't be anything that bad because you guys are constantly communicating. And I feel like you shouldn't sleep in different rooms because all that does is perpetuate the cycle. You wake up in the morning and you're still upset right i sleep next to you and i i i might be writhing a little bit might be a little upset wake up in the morning and there you are like i'm married to this person this is this is who i chose as my one person i mean some of us might have several people but um this is my person right so it might ease you a little bit might release some of that and think pillow talk um, some of my best discussions have happened with pillow talk. Best resolutions have been found with pillow talk when things are settled. Um, I'm not a Bible thumper, but I do believe in not letting uh, your wrath go down on the, on the sun. Don't let your anger go down on the sun. Don't let the sun go down with your anger, child. Meaning, don't go to bed upset. Jose asked her, you know, what else do you want? I know you want to get to know me and everything, but what else? She was like, I want to see how we gel with spontaneity and adventure. Are you willing to skydive? You know, he was like, I'll do anything or whatever. Some mess. And she's like, oh, would you skydive with me? He said, yes. My question to you is, would you skydive? Yo, I'm low-key scared of heights. Low-key. High-key scared of heights. I'm going skydiving on Saturday. I'm doing it. I am going to vlog it. Now, I ain't telling you it's going to come up right away, but understand that I have content that I'm sharing with you that I'm going to start sharing. Now, let's go on to Mirla, not Merla, but Mirla, trying to remember I got corrected on her name, and Gil. Mirla, I have pet peeves with people saying my name wrong, and I really do like to say people's names right. Mirla. Mirla. Okay. So we see them in the bed and they bond on the fact that their both their fathers died a violent death. So number one, that they died. And then number two, that it was violent. And my heart goes out to the both of them. Very much so tumultuous experiences with Gil being there and going in. Anyway, it had to be a horrible experience. He calls 911. He sees the aftermath of his father being shot, right? He sees it. Then he goes with him to the hospital and they tell him that your dad is dead. They don't tell his mom. They don't tell his brother. They tell him. He sees all of this with his eyes. Like, oh my God, the trauma. But he did say he worked through it. You know, he said he moved on and he worked through it. Um, Cause it's been 20 something years. And the next morning she shares her experience and talk about devastating. His father married someone else and their daughter, they had a daughter. I really feel like it was her daughter, the wife's daughter. Um, her story, 
the stepsister, half sister, stepsister, the other lady was that he harassed her all the time. And he, she called and said that she wanted to, uh, that she needed some help. And they ambushed him and stabbed him, violently stabbed him, accosted him, and then admitted to it later. And that was in 2015. That was not that long ago. We're in 2021. So what is that? Five, six years ago? That's hard. So they, the one thing for sure is that when she has her moment, Gil can support her in her time of need when she's emotional when he, he he's going to be able to relate and to understand hopefully tell her to seek therapy too hopefully she's in therapy right now seems like the type of girl that would wouldn't be afraid of it to me uh we go and we meet the family and then gil is all excited that it's only fellas he's like you know because uh women tend to drill more i'm all like yo don't get it twisted men may not come with a barrage of questions but the depth and the seriousness of how they feel about the women in their family that they love, sisters, cousins, mothers, nieces, daughters, is unmatched. You can see it in the end. He was like, yeah, I felt more relaxed. I was like, these brothers, it's not looking like we here to play patty cake and hate to have tequila shots together. We here to get to the bottom of this. See what you really like. You know, they want to protect you. Listen, so Gil shares, because it's a little silent after he says, oh, I'm glad to see it's the fellas or whatever, you know, trying to make things easy. But he says, I'm in this for the long haul. I want a long lasting relationship, a long lasting marriage. Like this is what I want. So, the was it the friend? I think it was the brother. I think it was one who said, um, are there any red flags that you notice? Is there anything about her that are red flags? And he says, yes, finances. We aren't on the same page, pretty much. And she says that she doesn't want to um, change her lifestyle and we have not have had a conversation about it. You know, I don't care about money like that. What they say to him is don't worry about it. Her lifestyle, lifestyle does not have to change uh, because she married you. She makes money to be able to afford the lifestyle she lives. The brother's like, I see her finances all, all the time. And before she does anything else, she saves. And then she goes and buys the things that she wants because she works hard. And don't get it twisted. She does not need a man. She does not need the support, but she wants it. Ladies, raise your hand if you know how much of a big difference that is. I mean, I don't need you, but I want you. It's a big difference. I can stand on my own two feet, but I want you. Now, don't get me wrong. You show in the hell can contribute. But my point is, I'm not looking for someone to take care of me. That is what Mirla brothers are trying to explain. Brothers and friends. Brother and friends are explaining to him. Like, it's great. But know that she got her shit. She got her own, she got it together. And um, I know that it could be a problem when you, you know, mailed incomes. It doesn't have to be. Find the solution that works best for your, your relationship. How do you keep your own financial autonomy, but also contribute to the household that you live in? Figure that out, talk it out. Don't be afraid to talk finances, credit scores, savings. Listen, and if you don't have it together, if they love you, they might, be willing to to show you how to become more financially stable it's a horrible thing to be in a marriage and be financially unyoked and when i say unyoked i don't mean how much money you make but the way you think about money the way you see money the way you value money the way you spend money and the best way because if i love you and our spending habits are different the best way for us to continue to vibe, continue to grow, continue to love and not have this cause a wedge is to figure out what works best for us as a whole and a way for me to keep my autonomy so that I can splurge. So if that is sitting down and talking about the house budget and what we're putting here and who's doing what, and then anything left over is yours to do what you will, right? So be it. 
if we're talking about retirement, how much we should be putting together, the, putting away to save, so be it. How are, are, do, what does our financial portfolio look like? All of those things, like, uh, it's never too late. It's never too late because I have not always been good with my money, but baby, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, God has been good to me. Um, let me keep going. Juan, the brother, says, look, we ain't gonna have no problems. You ain't gonna have to see the other side of me if you say, if you are who you say you are. <laughs> and I felt that in my spirit, as did Gil. You see him swallow hard because Juan was not kidding about that i always want to say how they say it one is what i would never say but that's not how they say it uh merla nope mirla 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 is talking to gills people and you know what she shares i'm a moody uh, she says i'm moody i let i let him know that i'm moody i'm i throw tantrums too sometimes but we talked about it and he'll know because i'll just say i don't want to do that it looks like she's very much so protected, so I could see how she could be bratty <laughs> versus moody. And really, does anybody want to be with somebody who is moody? Which means your moody to me means your disposition changes with the wind. One minute you're happy, the next minute you're not. Like we're sitting here together. Is she a Gemini? <laughs> no offense, no offense. Y'all don't come for me. Uh, his friends share with her, listen. She's, he's loyal, he's truthful, he's authentic. He is going to give you, what you see is what you get. She asks about triggers and they were like, no, he's pretty happy, but he gets excitable in his emotions. But what they meant was passionate, that he's passionate about things. But he's not like yelling and going off the deep end. Listen, I can't wait, I, I can't wait till about what we, well, week five, week, week four. Week four, week five is when we really get to see what's up with these people and their personalities, behavioral traits, and characteristics. Like, I like all the niceties they have. Can we get to it? We normally see stuff in the honeymoon, but when they come home, we be ready. So now they're debriefing in the, in the hotel room. And I said, you know, I don't know what the conversation was, but I was like, I can see her being very vocal about how she feels and what she wants, regardless regardless it like i i feel like she knows how to articulate herself and express herself now is it always we'll have to see how this works out because i don't know if it's always going if it's in a positive light or is it in a, br a brighty manner we're gonna have to see they end up having the money conversation and gil just shares listen i'm not money driven but she says i am and I keep wanting to climb the ladder and make more and more and more money. And what she says in her confessional is that, you know, I grew up poor. And you know what? A lot of times people's success is a byproduct of how they grew up. Like, I don't want to experience this anymore. I want to be on the top. All I keep writing down that I don't keep saying is that she's hella particular. She's very much so particular. They get to the honeymoon. And when I tell you she, com she complained about everything, the room, I like the, I like the presidential suite better at the other place. Oh, the view. Well, it's nice in the dark. I can't hear the ocean. Like, very much so particular to the point that it is borderline complaining. I am saying, though, for him, he is giving her a lot of grace and, ex and is exhibiting a lot of patience. He is very much so accommodating and may be a good match for her. I mean, cause I'm all like, girl, you complaining about something that's free? Do your honeymoon over then if you want to, but this is free, F-R-E-E, -E, free. Let's talk about Brett and Ryan. I don't really have much written down for them. I'm actually like, it's a lot of awkward silence in this in, with this couple. Like, what are we doing? Are they gonna make it? I don't think so now. Like I thought maybe, I was hopeful I was on the fence, but right now I'm all like, it's a no. I also wrote down, she, does she really like him? Like I don't really have much to say. They go and now we're meeting their the families. Brett uh, looks like a lot like her dad. Like that's her dad's whole face, his eyes, his mouth. Um, the length of the face is the mother. I wrote down, he seems very quiet very introverted and this may be a problem because she seems the exact opposite and then he 
we had no questions for the, like the mom is talking and asking questions about, you know, what do you think about her? And he said, redheads can either be really cute or not. Like, not the answer that you should be giving. Um, and I, I guess that's where she, she gets it from. She gets it from her mother. Like, I want to know, what did you think about me? What, what do you think about this? What do you like, you know, mm, tread lightly. Uh, I wrote down, you know what it said that he had no questions, no expectations. And I wrote down that is why he is single, has not met his person, um, because he's not a good com communicator. And if he is, it takes a while for him to warm up. He needs someone that is going to talk a lot and ask a lot of questions, but he does not seem like one that is willing to share, um, immediately brett sits with his family and she does ask the questions when she asked why we were matched they shared that it's your personality you're going to pull him out of um his shell it's gonna you know take some tugging you know but you will and what i like that she said was i plan on being myself I'm authentic, I'm, this is who I am. What you see is what you get and hopefully you accept it. Hopefully you accept me for who I am. And I wrote down kudos. Like, I like that you don't wanna have your representative up front. I'm, I, I like that a lot that you didn't, that you're not pretending to be someone that, to fit the mold that he wants, but just are gonna show up as you are and it's gonna work or he's or it's not. During the debriefing the two of them had, he says that, you know, he doesn't feel like it's going to uh, take a whole lot to get him to open up. She ain't going to have to pull the chain or whatever. I was like, she is because she's been doing it now. She is. I'm wondering if this is one of the couples they set up for failure. Um, and then we find out she's scared of planes. We get to the honeymoon. Child, and they start talking about it. And he was like, it's a lot. He also said that if this was a first date, I would never go out with her again. We would never go out. Not I wouldn't go on planes with her. We would never go out again. I wrote down she needs sleeping pills or a drink or something. Cause, or something. Cause he made it seem like it was a lot. Like she was worse than the babies on the plane. Like, what was she doing? Can somebody give us some insight? Did anybody hear anything? Does anybody know? How was she acting? Are you afraid of planes? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you are, how do you react to playing? Okay, let's talk about our last couple, which is Zach and Michaela. Uh, I'm shocked that they didn't have sex the first night, but they, they did the next night, didn't they? <laughs> anyway, so, cause she said she's le le gonna lean in to whatever happens. You know, that's what that meant. I don't know, we talked, I don't know why I wrote down this. It's snoring an issue for you. I wrote that down. I don't know why. Was that a question that I had for y'all? I snore. I tell everybody that I date, anybody that I'm just gonna spend the night, get my spend the night bag, are they coming over here? I let them know that I snore. Dear oh. future bays, I snore. Not all the time, but if I trust you and I'm comfortable with you, I'm gonna let relax and be at ease and I am going to snore. That says a lot about you. So the next morning they're sitting and they're eating and, and uh, Zach asked Michaela why, why married at first sight? And she said that she could be passive and it was a way for her to stop her, excuse me, it was a way for, of her to stop her, her habits from previous, which is she would be passive and have nonchalant behavior as a defense mechanism. She didn't speak up for herself, but I wrote down she possessive. For me, that's a, that's a negative. Ooh, I'm no one's possession. This is mine. No, I'm not. That's my thought process. I, I don't want to go all the way into it, but I'm my own person and I'm allowing you to share with me, to share in, in me and my, with me, my experiences and who I am and my joys. And I'm, I'm allowing you to, please don't think that I am yours. I'm a light. I'm a beacon. And I share that light with lots of people. So please don't put the parameters on me that I'm yours. I don't know. Y'all might not agree with that and that's okay. But you know where I want you to do it at? Down below in the comments. Because I know as women, we can be very much so possessive. This is my man. Harper, who this woman? 
You say this here, I just joint. Mm-hmm. You just a big old heifer. Okay, girl. She said I said fine with me. Like <laughs> Oh, have mercy on my soul. I'm Sorry, I'm kinda I don't funny. Understand. So then Michaela asked Zach if he's jealous. And he's like, no, no, I'm not jealous. And this is where she's like, I'm not jealous. I'm possessive. He's mine. Like I said last week, she's got a lot of over the top energy. Imagine that energy being channeled into when she's upset. Remember I said that. I mean, we did get, get a glimpse of it. But remember I said that. I say that every time when you see people that are so passionate and gung ho and so over the top extroverted, a lot of times, on the flip side, it looks the same. Anyway, it's time to meet the family and go, Zach goes and sits with his sister, with her sisters, who of course already love her, love him for her, she's. Uh, but he continues to make a good impression upon them. Uh, he asked them, do you have any advice? What they said was when she's passionate about something, be that too. Uh, there's nothing like being excited about someone and then the person that is supposed to be your partner uh, is not as thrilled. Is less enthusiastic. I like when they're like, oh, I'm excited. Oh, that's good. Oh, you did what? You had a pop-up event? How'd it go? Did you have a good turnout? I love when they ask questions and um, care about the things that I, I do, right? I mean, it's great. I mean, it don't make it or break it, but it just it just sh is showing me that you do care about me and the things that I'm doing. Is that just me? Um, they said the one sister said, "Listen, protect her. She don't know that she needs protecting because we've been protecting her as our baby sister for forever. But we need you to protect her. Can you do that? Can you step into that role?" Now, Michaela is with his family, and I literally wrote, she is too much over the top with, like, I don't know if that's all genuine. You've seen the people before that be like, hi! Like, I get it. I get excited, too. It's also sometimes a mechanism, like a defense mechanism. Like, if I'm, if I'm exuding all this energy, then they have nothing but can do nothing but receive it, but you can also see through it. I'm just, I really like her, right? Not just because she's a black woman, but because she's a black woman. And I know how much of a hard time we get for standing in who we are. So I'm really rooting for her. I'm really rooting for them as a couple, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about her sitting with her, his family. Uh, and dad's like, he's, I want you to know he's spoiled. She said, spoiled, mom said particular. <laughs> yeah dad knows spoil and they said that they all three of them are you know she only had boys but they also said that he was loyal and that he is amazing with children and that you would have thought that he had five kids of his own because he's so good with kids that's a plus that's a plus they asked her how do you handle conflict resolution we could tell you anything we want <laughs> when you ask us we can tell you any thing we want we can say all the words and make them beautiful and flowery but real life hits into something different and she started off with saying you know i didn't have a healthy view of conflict resolution that i did not like excuse me that i did not like the way my parents um argued she gets choked up in the process of that talking about her dad because we know her dad was hit by a drunk di drunk driver. And what I loved is that they showed us a clip of number one when they said, can we get Michaela and her dad to the dance floor and nobody showed up? First thing Dad Zach did was look at her and say, are you okay? And you know, she was a little teary eyed. You saw the sisters in the, sisters of the audience was all teary eyed because my dad's not there. So. I felt her pain, but I felt what she was feeling and her sisters was feeling. And Zach said, hold on, I got it, I got it. Don't worry, I got you, I got you. He is going to care for her if she lets him. Because I feel like she went over and, he went over and asked his dad to dance with Michaela because her dad was not here. 
and he did it. And that was so touching to me. Like, big deal, big deal. I had a moment. Okay, so what she said was, the way she's gonna handle conflict resolution is that she's going to be respectful. And sometimes you have to step away and she doesn't believe in all that yelling and name calling and you know, all that good stuff, right? Uh, okay girl, that ain't what we saw, but I need to wait. I don't want to talk about any of that until I see what actually happened. Dad shares, listen, we are protective of Zach and we want and are hopeful that this is going to be forever but your actions will be the proof that we need and we're hoping this is the real deal when they debrief you know Zach shares yeah my family is no nonsense like that's pretty much what I gathered um but then we are at before we leave for the honeymoon, the day before we leave for the honeymoon honey we wake up you can see she ain't got no clothes on when they talking in that uh camera honey let's get it on oh baby let's get it on okay let's make love baby yeah let's get it on uh-uh-uh i'm not gonna do it <laughs> uh but they were intimate and he was very happy and she was very happy they get over to the florida keys and he is not feeling well he sleeps in a separate room because you know that it's still a ponderosa in full effect. The variance is li living in live, okay, in full effect. So he took a test and he'll get his results back. We'll see what they are next week. So, I mean, he sleeps in another room. He is considering her. Listen, y'all let me know, okay? We're going to ask again uh, every week for a little while. Maybe not every week, but we're going to ask this week, who do we think is going to make it to the end, okay? I want Michaela and Zach to make it to the end. I like Bao and Johnny, but I'm hoping that they can get through their physical intimacy issues because that is what's going to be. Oh, I didn't even talk about the Excel spreadsheet. How did I not talk about the Excel spreadsheet? They're kind of the same, except for he has a checklist and he was not put off by Bow's Express Excel spreadsheet. That's enough. I'm hopeful that they're gonna make it. Um, Mirla and Gil seem to have a lot in common. He seems like he is very passionate. Um, and I'm, you know, gonna keep my thoughts to myself because she is very negative. And how much is it going to take him to constantly throw sunshine balls at her all the time, rainbow uh, spheres and shit at her all the time in order for her to be, you know, this more uh, glass half full person, right? Then you've got Rachel and Johnny. They will, Rachel and Johnny, wrong people, wrong people. Rachel and Jose. Um, they seem to be doing okay right now. I don't know yet. Y'all let me know who I missed. I missed somebody. I miss, Oh, Brett and Ryan is a no for me. I don't think that they're going to make it. I don't think they're going to make it. The disgust that he had about her in that plane ride, I don't think they're going to make it. <laughs> Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you think. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight, season number 13. See? Episode number four. Uh-huh. Um, if it's your first time visiting my channel, Definitely, you should be clicking that red subscribe button to become a ray of sunshine. There's a notification bell that you should click all on so you're alerted of all the videos I upload going forward. Give me a thumbs up because it is me you like. It is me that you're coming to see. And I be having some good stuff to say, okay? And I be letting y'all talk and we probably gonna go live. Monday, maybe. We going live. Be prepared. You gotta have notifications clicked in order to know when we're going live, okay? Uh, share it with your friends so they can be part of this conversation. Share it with your community, on your social medias, anywhere, in your group chats, you know what it is. In the groups you in, share it, okay? Share it, share it, and share a like. It's nice to spread sunshine. I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll see you on the next review.